asked for introductions in the chat box. I'll probably post it multiple times um, so everybody can see it. But what I'm asking you to do is to introduce yourself, your first name, give a land recognition on where you work and live, and one word that described you as a teen. All right, rebellious, moody, brassy, happy, and quiet. These are all great descriptive words of um, who we saw ourselves as teens, or maybe what you were told you were like as a teen. But one word that describes you as a teen. Happy and shy, perfectionist, and a pretty big Fairbanks contingency here. Hello, Fairbanks. Great. reserved, outgoing. It's really hard to self-define uh, ourselves with one word, especially during adolescence. There's lots, there's lots of our lives that, <laughs> uh, that is taken over by adolescence, or not taken over, but is a part of our growing up um, and blossoming and emerging. So if you are if you are putting, if you're feeling pressured to define yourself with one word, it's totally normal <laughs> um, to feel that pressure. Um, maybe if, you know, the beginning of adolescence, like at 10 years old, you felt um, un uncomfortable within yourself. And then as you get older, you feel more comfortable. Um, and then later on in life, you start to second guess um, having maybe some current concerns about how you are perceived by your friends or um, body image. Um, I think if you haven't yet introduced yourself in the chat, please do so. Um, I'm gonna type it in one more time here. I believe we should have Should have about 26 people so it might be still gets we might still get some trickles in so if folks could um remind folks as they're coming in to introduce themselves in the chat or um kite if you wouldn't mind typing that in as well um so that we can get started do you have any introductions that you need to share before i begin uh nope i think we're good okay Type it in one more time and post here. Awesome. Um, thank you for joining us today and for the Annual School Health and Wellness Institute. I am Jenny Baker. I work with the Adolescent Health Program within the Division of Public Health at the State Department of Health and Social Services. I've been with the state for about 10 years. Um, I've had the great opportunity of working with a lot of amazing um, young people and supportive adults over the course of that 10 years and even before in the state of Alaska for about 15 years. Um, I find 
things that are important to me are um, social, racial, and justice and equity, especially with young people um, and finding their place in this world um, and finding their sparks. So what we're going to be talking about today um, is a little bit more about that helping youth develop those pieces. Um, this is just a taster. So consider this an appetizer of actual full motivational interviewing skills. Um, this is very brief. Um, there is a couple links I will be offering you towards the end of the presentation that really looks at um, online training, an audio book, um, a free book and workbook resource and an in-person skills training that can accompany that work. Um, all in all, it's about 16 hours of your time total. Um, half of that is independent learning and the other half of that is over virtual until we can go back to in-person skills training. Um, before uh, we begin, does anybody else have any questions about um, the content that we're going to be sharing today um, or any preconceived notions or expectations that I should be aware of. Okay, and half of you, I can't see you. I can only see your beautiful names. Um, so as we move forward in the age of virtual training, um, if you are hearing me, we're going to go through a little bit of Zoom etiquette and group rules or um, social contract, I should say, um, to look at how we can um, best engage in learning together today. Um, I know that many of you being teachers or administrators are suffering through this change and probably learning a lot um, from each other in this day and age um, and new practices in teaching. So I'm here to learn from you as well. And I'm not an expert, but I am continuing to learn along with you. Um, no requirements to have your camera on. Um, so if you have internet challenges, that's totally fine. Um, but we will be talking about some etiquette pieces just so I know that you're hearing me. Um, all of this work that I am doing is made possible by a reimbursable services agreement with temporary assistance for needy families funding through the Division of Public Assistance. This has been one of our main funding streams in the adolescent health program for the last 14 years. We are very grateful for the increased um, attention to positive youth development, strength-based focuses, and not just teen pregnancy or unintended pregnancy prevention. Um, they are wonderful partners, um, and we're also very thankful for Dr. Jennifer Salerno, who was the creator of the Teen Speak book, um, and she started researching it and writing it as a nurse practitioner um, along with having kids and she found it was important to share some of the things that she had learned um, with a broader audience of parents and supportive adults. Um, as we already did, we talked in the chat, if you have not done so already, to give your name. Um, and I didn't say school or agency, I said where you're from, because that's totally fine. I love to see where people are coming from. I kind of had tonight a, a perception that you may, most of you have are at schools, but if you have, other places that you are a supportive adult in young people's lives, that's completely expected. So if you are also a parent, an auntie, um, if you are a neighbor, all of these skills are applicable to each one of those roles that we play. So here's some of our group agreements as devised by young people's words. This is not the only, this is not the teen speak, but it is coming from young people. So here are group agreements. Um, if anyone can take a look on the screen and tell me what they think some of these may mean. You unmute yourself and then we'll um, talk about them. Anyone? I could guess on the um, don't yuck my yum is maybe like don't put me down for something that I think is great or a good idea or something that I believe in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Even if it's a, um, my identity or things that I like doing with my time, um, music that I like. Absolutely. Absolutely, Deborah. all of those things. 
Any other perceptions on don't yuck my yum? I could guess on Vegas rule, whatever happens here stays here. <laughs> Yeah, kind of inappropriate, right? But what I like to clarify with the Vegas rule is whatever is said here stays here um, under the one condition that it is being recorded. So um, what won't be uh, coming away from this, I, I believe, are the, um, the breakout rooms. So they'll give you a chance to like practice speaking together. Um, but at the same time, because this is being recorded, um, it's kind of one of those uh, virtual Vegas rules. So what's said here stays here and what's learned here leaves here. Um, and that's what I'd like to encourage us to think about today. Anyone else want to share about the rules before we move forward? Oh, and yeah, rules, maybe not rules because rules are meant to be broken, right? But agreements that we can all agree upon. The set aside other digital distractions is a really big one because we're all on our computers. We could be checking emails or doing other things. Um, and humans are actually really bad at multitasking. So we need to focus on just one thing at a time, which is you this morning. The illustrious Jenny Baker. Yes, no, um, I, but learning together is really important. It's really hard to, to not check email. So, um, and that reminds me too, I'm gonna silence my phone. Um, and I did close my email out. So that's that was important for me because I too get distracted by dings. Thank you for that clarification, Jordan, and the reminder. Um, anyone else wanna say anything about step up, step back? I wonder, um, this is Kristen in Fairbanks. I wonder if that means um, be willing to participate, but also be willing to listen to others and um, like take a step back and um, think about their viewpoint and perspective as well. Absolutely. Or maybe start a conversation and then, um, yeah, wait what others have to say. Absolutely, yeah. Both absolute, both perfect points. So being able to, and it's hard for me as a presenter because I am kind of a performer at this point um, and being able to present to you, but really I tried my best to make time throughout the presentation for everybody to engage. So that's an important piece. And yeah, if you're used to sharing a ton, being able to sit back and learn is, um, or if, you're, if you process auditorily by speaking what you heard, um, in the Youth Alliance for Healthier Alaska young group that I work with, when we hear something we like, we always say yaha instead of having to reiterate it all over again. Um, but sometimes if you hear something you like um, and you want to make sure that you also have your concurrence, um, you can use some thumbs up um, in the reactions buttons. Um, we'll go over that here in just a moment. Um, would you uh, mind putting in that call for introductions? Hi, when you have a moment. All right. So um, any other thoughts on group agreements before we ask for a social contract agreement? Any other thoughts? Okay. All right, hearing none. What I'm gonna ask you to do today is to go into your reactions button. Um, if you can look at that at the bottom of your screen, it should have some emojis in there. You can also go to the participants button and click next to your name. Um, so if I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but usually on the participants button, you can put your yes, no agreement here or your more thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, and if, if I could ask everyone to um, tell me if they agree to our social contract before we move forward, then I'll know that everyone is in agreement with what we have decided to do today for good learning. All 
Awesome. Thank you all. And for those of you that have just joined and you have no idea what you're agreeing to, um, totally fine <laughs> after you've introduced yourself. Um, I just wanted to let you know that we have our group agreements posted here on the screen so that as we move forward, we can all be under the same um, learning agreement of staying focused and engaged. And if you have questions about what any of these mean, please speak up now or agree um, with the content that is being shared as far as our social contract. Anyone else have any questions about this? Okay. Thank you, Amy, for your introduction and Lori. All right. So uh, what we're going to do together today is just a quick presentation on a broader subject um that is really focused on adolescent motivational inter interviewing and adolescent focused motivational interviewing um, is a is just like any other motivational interviewing except there's a couple foundational key points that are important when it comes to engaging with adolescents in motivational interviewing and it's really about setting up the foundations um, and asking permission and um, being able to meet in a place that's respectful and not just in a physical space, but in a mental and emotional space that's uh, mutually respectful. And more details on that in the broader um, training, but it really is built on the foundation of trust and respect. Um, and so what we're going to do today is just have some fun and we're going to practice a couple really easy skills and then I will encourage you to join us for more. A um, couple housekeeping pieces. The This is the Zoom functions we'll use. Please make most of the chat. Go ahead and I will have it open. So keep me um, informed if you have questions about the content I'm offering. Um, raise your hands if you have questions. Thumbs up if you agree with things. Um, and we're going to be using the breakout rooms as well. The some of the other features that we'll use in particular is a raise hand thumbs up if you are in agreement of things so we can keep things moving forward and your participants button I think I mentioned before. You can also ask me to slow down or speed up um, if you're falling asleep um, or if you're having trouble following. And thanks Lori I see that you were as a team trying to fit in we talked a little bit earlier about. Um, chatting in the in the box about who you were as a teen and so i encourage you to look back and at folks and how they um how they identified themselves or maybe were told that they were the kind of person that they were when they were teens um, we do like to think about young people um, as this like separate strange time oh by the way this is this is me behind as an adolescent jumping into crater lake which is totally illegal um so that's <laughs> that was me also rebellious as as a young person um so knowing that that we have different definitions of ourselves throughout our life and even as young people um that definition may change over time especially as we gain confidence and find our place in this world um, some of the most important pieces of the reasonings behind why I love motivational interviewing and why it's an effective practice is because it decreases substance use, delays sexual initiation, decreases depression, and reduces suicide attempts, and decreases violence. So each one of these components really is about looking at, obviously, the data behind it. Um, so if you are interested, um, some of our... Um, our superheroes in adolescent health um, are Becky Judd and Char Charles Udermall from the state. And they have done a lot of research on, um, on supportive adult relationships and positive youth development. And a lot of these co-occurring risk factors are also combated with these prevention or protective factors. Um, how many of you with a show of hands know and have learned about risk and protective factors and co-occurring risk and protective factors. Just my hands, thank you. 
Yes. Would anyone like to describe either in the chat or audio what they think is one of the most important protective factors for young people or the most effective? Maybe having one supportive person in their life. Absolutely. There, there is data that shows that a young person that has three to five supportive adults in their lives, optimally, optimally five are the least likely to have negative health impacts that we have listed here on the screen. Um, some of these indicators are part of our youth risk behavior surveillance data. Um, especially the um, percentage of high school students who had at least one parent to talk to with them about what they were doing in school every day. The percentage of students who agree strongly um, or agree that their teachers really care about them and give them a lot of encouragement. Um, the other one is that um, the percentage of high school students with three or more adults besides their parents who they feel comfortable seeking help from if they have a question affecting their life. And so we think about how important it is for not only for us to be supportive adults in this nature um, for young people, but how supportive are we? How are we supportive for young people? Um, and that's why these skills are so important because it lets us be able to set aside who we are, how we've grown up, and even challenges us to, um, to really think about how we receive information and then how we're supportive adult for another young person. So with the motivational interviewing, it's been extensively researched and it's really about communicating effectively with the youth. Um, and this requires a specialized approach. So this level of interaction um, talks about helping a young person identify risk behaviors on their own and also help them set goals for themselves um, as as they move forward. And even the great thing about motivational interviewing too is it doesn't have to be about the negative stuff all the time. It can also be about the great stuff and sustaining really great healthy behaviors. Um, so that's where we where it comes into looking at our ORs, open-ended questions, affirmations, reflections, and summaries. Um, this is how we develop rapport with young people, along with how we help them move and or sustain positive and healthy choices. All right, so um, forgive me for one minute and I'm gonna have us go into breakout rooms and I just need to actually set them up. Um, and how many people do we have, Kai? Right now we have 24. Oh, yes. Okay. So we're going to do 12 breakout rooms. Um, I'm going to create the breakout rooms, but do not join them yet. And I'll give you some instructions. And there may be um, one person that is going to be in a third or Patricia, you're welcome to hang out with me. We can, we can talk. That's totally fine too. I don't know if I'm in another room. I don't think I'm allowed to since I'm a hostess. Um, okay, so I'll open those in just a minute. And simultaneously, I'm going to hopefully show you the next slide. There you go. Okay, can you guys see them? Can you all see the instructions that I? Yes, good. Okay, so what we're going to do is do um, two people in each breakout room, and we're going to give you five minutes total. 2.5 minutes each, and it'll be like a conversation. And then the first person to elicit a response from their partner is going to ask, how was your day? You can talk about yesterday. It's early. Unless you were up at four o'clock, you haven't had a full day to respond on. And that's what we <laughs> So how was your yesterday? Okay. Um, and then let the person respond and they can say, how was your day? And then the next one, the person goes again and says, tell me about your day. And then see if there's a difference in how the responses are received. Okay, I will give you a heads up at 2.5 minutes to let you know that 
uh, if you haven't switched yet to do so, um, or if, if you have just to let you know that we're, we're limiting down. And if you've already switched and you make it conversational, then that's totally fine. Um, you will get a 60 second like extra like heads up um, just to say like, okay, the rooms are closing. You're welcome to come back before that time is done. And then we'll debrief. Sound great? Okay, I'm seeing a couple head nods, but if you have any questions about the assignment or the, any challenges, feel free to send a chat in the chat box. Okay, here we go, opening the rooms. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Doing pretty good. Uh, I guess, to... Yeah, yeah. I guess I should say, how was your day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, my day was good. It was fine. How was your day? It's been good so far. Um, right now I'm in Oregon, so I'm an hour ahead. So I've had a little bit more of a day than. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Is it snowy down there? Um, yeah, I'm in Eastern Oregon and it's been kind of little flurries all morning long. And there's still probably six or seven inches on the ground right now. Nice. Yeah. All right. Um, tell me about your day, your yesterday. Um, yesterday I worked for the morning and then I uh, went and looked through my grandma's attic because <laughs> I just bought a new car down here that I'm taking back to Juno. So she wanted me to see if there was anything I wanted and that was fun and overwhelming, but so it was yeah. good. It was like yeah. a little walk down memory lane. How was yeah, so cool? Or tell me about your day. Um, let's see. We got, have a new puppy. Um, so all of our days for the past week and a half have been total whirlwinds. Um, my break is going to work. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, coming home and playing with her and snuggling with her and yeah. What kind of puppy is she? Uh, she's a great game. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's so fun. Yeah. How old is she? She is about nine and a half weeks now. Yeah. That's a fun stage. So you're, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. having an infant. <laughs> it totally is. Yeah. Yeah. Little toddler. She is. Yeah. She's luckily she sticks pretty close to us, but hasn't gotten into major anything major yet so yeah that's good yeah that's fun yeah yeah how cool to go through your grandmother's stuff though I love my grandparents are gone now but I love just the opportunity to go through stuff with my mom and yeah yeah, yeah it was really cool my grandma is current she goes to Arizona for the winters so she's not yeah. here right now but it was fun to go through there they used to own I mean, Hepner, my hometown is really small. So they owned the shoe store, which was attached to an antique store and a fabric store and my papa cut hair <laughs> and they were realtors. <laughs> so okay. it was fun. It was fun to get to like, look at all the stuff that used to be in the store. And I took a couple oh, things yeah. home, but, or I'm, I'm taking a couple things home, but yeah, it was cool. They had some really good records in there that I scored, so. Nice. Yeah, it was fun. Very cool. And where do you normally live? I live in Juneau. Okay. Yeah, so I just came down. I, I needed a new car and I didn't want to buy one that's been sitting in a rainforest. So mm -hmm. my dad found a really sweet deal on a Jeep Renegade in Hermiston, nice. which is close by here. So I came down to buy a car and I'm I'll drive it to Seattle tomorrow and then fly home. Okay. Have it shipped over. Yeah. 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 So it's been nice to see everybody. It's been, I mean, we haven't done anything because it's, yeah. you know, <laughs> the world we live in, but it's been nice to be home. So my dad's still yeah, in like the house that I grew up in. So I've been going through my closet and finding like poem books that I wrote when I was like eight and like Aww. all sorts of stuff. So it's been pretty, <laughs> pretty entertaining. 
That's super neat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How fun. Where are I, you at right now? Um, I'm in Wasilla. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. For whatever reason, my dad yesterday started saying, he's like, here's a picture of me and your mom. And they divorced when I was like five. And um, I was like, oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> um, yeah. Are you from Wasilla originally? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I grew up here. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So do you get to see your parents often or? Um, my mom lives about five minutes away. Um, and then my dad lives down in Montana. We don't, I don't see him very often, um, but we talk frequently. Nice. Yeah. That's nice having your mom so close. Oh, it's super nice. Yeah. 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 It's great. And now our son is down in Montana too. So it's time for him to get to know his grandpa a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Is he down there for school? Um, he was, but now he's just working at the ski resort and living with some friends. So. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Figuring his life out. <laughs> Yeah. Very cool. So you had to get a puppy since your son's out of the house. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> we just needed something. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I got a puppy. I something. Yeah, yeah, I got a puppy last summer, like in July, okay. and yeah, it's it's been fun. But it's my first puppy. Like I've always just got like adopted older dogs, you know, mm -hmm. or like three or four. So yeah, it's been entertaining and kind of exhausting, but. <laughs> I forgot how much work it is to have yeah. a puppy. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's a lot of fun, so. It is fun. Yeah. And it's cool to see like their little personalities grow. Cause oh, it totally all my is, other yeah. dogs, it's like you already had your personality when we met each other, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. All right. Well, it's been good talking to you. Yeah, you too. I'll see you back right. in the big room. Okay. Bye. Bye. When you check back if they got the body price information that you gave them. So, um, yeah. Great. Well, I'm glad you're here and I will encourage you to bring in your expertise too as we um, go into debrief here in just a minute. Thank you. Um, I should have closed that when I said there was one minute left and then I did not. Um, there's a little, there's a little multitasking for me. Sorry about that. So folks should be coming back here. Awesome. Thank you. Usually I have a little music playing during our, our comeback, but, um, I was multitasking. Uh, if you were, if you were to, if you're coming back, is there a particular, if you want to throw it in the chat, is there a particular song um, or genre of music that reminds you of adolescence currently, or even your adolescence? Um, a particular song or a particular genre of music? I was playing Queen earlier as we were starting. That always reminds me of adolescence and um, not necessarily my adolescence, but just that it's playful and fun and love focused and um, <laughs> Queen for your mom. Nice, Kide. Um, Yeah, just such joy and kind of middle fingery sometimes and just yeah, cure Depeche Mode, New Kids on the Block. Yes, that was definitely part of Go-Go's, yes. Green Day, totally. Um, you can continue to, to enter those in. Rihanna, yes, Evanescence, Fallout. Oh my gosh, Evanescence. I'm gonna have to listen to that later. Um, I encourage you to, to revel in those experiences and what it is about some of those music genres that were super important to you. Um, because when it comes to adolescence, our adolescent brains are very much limbic focused, emotional forward. 
And so it really is that opportunity to focus on um, some of those things that that we can live in through someone else's shared experience. And that's music for, for a lot of people. Music is that lived experience or shared experience. Great. Um, so let's debrief. How did that go for folks? How did it feel to have a conversation with someone and ask these two different questions? What was the difference for you? You can either enter it in the chat or unmute yourself. Go ahead, Barbara. I think one of them immediate, one of them provokes a very short answer and the other provoke, uh, encourages a conversation. Isn't that interesting? Because one's a question and the other one's a statement. Why does the statement, is it the statement that encourages you to tell more? The tell me about your day. Um, so why? It, it's why open ended. It's it's not just a, a a question you can't yeah you can't answer with one word when someone asks you to tell them about something so whereas like how is your day it's it's good and that's the end of it but and that's typically what you know people say to each other all the time how are you doing fine end of story you can say what you want and move on Right. It's almost like a condition of a social engagement as opposed to some, you know, an, uh, extreme interest. That's like Jordan uh, was saying in the chat box of small talk kind of filling in the gaps. Um, tell me how you feel, but don't don't give me details. <laughs> yeah, um, oh, really tell me. <laughs> uh, and, and that's an interesting part of of, uh, of our human condition, too, is that we know we should probably ask how people are doing, but we don't necessarily know how much we want to know or how we don't really want to know what we might need to know. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's there's a, a quite a bit of the question seems to require a positive judgment, um, which the question like, how was your day? Like you yeah. better, it better be good. Like, yeah. just tell me it's good so we can move on. <laughs> yeah, um, such an interesting part of of how we've learned to communicate with one another. Anyone else come up with some thoughts on like, how did it feel to actually tell somebody about your entire day? Yeah, this is Nelly. Can you hear me? I guess so. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I can. Like what Kristen was saying, um, it's it asks for a positive judgment. Also, it seems like it's um, that the second statement kind of invites you more to talk about anything like the flowers you see around you and that you're enjoying that instead of thinking about yourself, how I am doing. So it kind of broadens it open and it makes it more open into whatever you feel like talking about instead of uh, yourself, you know, tell me about your day. I might start talking about my mom and how she's doing and that I just thought, you know, which I didn't just now, but it could have instead I talked about the flowers that I did see right next to me. So yeah, Jordan had said here too. So even getting negative responses to that might be like, ooh, what did I get myself into? <laughs> totally. Um, yeah, that you're actually interested um, and that that you have time maybe to to hear about it. Yeah. Interesting. Anyways. Um, this was interesting that Kristen said um, the question seems to require a positive judgment. I think the important um, aspect of doing motivational interviewing techniques is you don't have any judgment on you. You just listen what the person tells you. And sometimes it's not really the words that you're hearing um, that is the essence of what they really wanna tell you. And then whatever you say back, your reflection, maybe just a simple rephrasing to maybe get your thoughts together to ask a more meaningful question afterwards, or you just go um, deeper. So for example, somebody, you know, a team may, oh, you know, I really, uh, I see my, my, I'm overweight, I know that, but I'm not, I'm very comfortable with it. And so what they may want to tell you is that they don't want to 
withdraw and when they start uh, losing weight, which is obviously not um, recommended in teenage years. Um, but so there is the different levels of reflection that you can use, but there cannot be any judgment because that may prompt you to say the wrong thing and shut the, um, the conversation down. Absolutely. And getting at that essence is really what you had said, Susan, was kind of one of the main foundations of, of motivational interviewing too, is the, the first response may not be the only response and it may not be the response you like, <laughs> especially uh, if you're a parent. Um, in support of adults and parents, there, there is, and even clinicians, there is a bit of a difference between how um, you receive information and what you want to give. My mom used to say, like, she just wanted to open up my brain and put the information in there and button it up and send me on my way um, because that would have been easier. But when we think about adolescent development and all different ages and stages and how much is crammed into adolescence in our in our early years between the ages of 10 and 25 plus um, and even anything else that might go on top of it, that essence is hugely important, especially if they're having um, emotional responses. So, and if I'm having an emotional response and someone else is having an emotional response, where is the co-regulation? Um, and it, that makes it really challenging too. So the acronym I like to give myself when, if I start feeling myself triggered is just Q-tip. Um, and it's one that I learned in roller derby. Um, when there are a bunch of women bumping around on each other on, on the track, um, what, what it stands for is quit taking it personally. Um, so that I am, I'm here and I'm listening and I can take that work from the track and be able to sit here and be kind of a mirror as opposed to someone that needs to impart my belief systems on someone else. And that's a hard role to play. Um, yeah. So was there anything else that, you know, that you came from about that listening component? And thank you so much, Suzanne, for your um, experience too. I appreciate your comment. Anyone else feeling or thoughts on their interaction? Um, Kristen put in the chat that they were able to relate way more once they started talking about their day and established a rapport more quickly that way. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. So we think about um, foundations of motivational interviewing. We think about that asking permission and providing a menu of options, offering concern, um, and also just making it not a menu of directives. So this is what you need to do to change your life. Um, how often on a scale, <laughs> or maybe you could just put um, your hand up on a scale of one to five, how likely are you to change your behavior based on what someone tells you to do? One being not likely or five being totally likely, I'll totally change my behavior if someone tells me what to do. Two, three. Depends on, maybe depends on who it is that's telling you what to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, the challenge being in this, that, that was not the best scale. Suzanne would have, I know she's like in the back of her head, supposed to be like zero to 10. Um, for a scale uh, of basically, one that's one of the tools in, in motivational interviewing that you use is to determine how ready someone might be for change, how likely they are. Um, how important something is, like an importance scale. And so there's another tool that we use um, in motivation interviewing to determine kind of where someone's at. Um, and if they were, are like at a seven instead of a, a, instead of a you know, four or five, then you can ask them about that. And maybe it's because they've made the change in the past, or maybe it's because someone believes in them and they've made a change before. Um, or that it's easy because they've already started the behavior and they're more in, in a behavior change mode and sustaining that change. So there's a lot of components in that. Um, this next slide, just to kind of move us forward a little bit, are just some examples of the difference between talking at or talking with. Um, and we like to emphasize the talking with um, and how that's different. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say the, the statement on the left. And if someone could say the statement on the right in 
um, and we can talk about the difference between those. Um, um, when we came back, uh, you're no longer sharing your screen, so we don't see oh. what you're. Well, that's that totally makes total sense. Sorry about that. Here we go. That's okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so stick now. We can see it. Great. So anyone can pop in, but we're just going to do a comparison of statements and see how they feel. Um, don't text and drive. Who would like to say a statement to the right? What would it take for you not to text while you are driving? Awesome. What's the difference between those two for you? It's definitely more inviting, the second one of, it gets their mind going of what's the motivation to do it, what's the motivation not to do it, and them trying to define what that line is for them, because yeah. they're the ones in the car. Right. Yeah, yeah, that too, that too, <laughs> whatever, the, whatever the kid said. <laughs> awesome. Um, any other thoughts on that one? Um, one of them yeah, gives them control yeah. while the other one is telling them what to do so yeah yeah and and we're wired not to like what if somebody tells us what to do so there's an immediate instant inner resistance to that i think it also gives the the person who's listening um maybe more information about what's motivating this person to text and drive. Um, so then there might be a, a help them to then respond or then, you know, move on to the next area of that conversation. It's also, it's also more solution focused. You know, the first one, there's no solution there it's just telling them well don't do it whereas the other you know what would it take for you the person that on the receiving end has to really think of an answer and come up with a solution and you're gonna forgive me if i mispronounce your name but is it nalike nalik yeah Nalik. okay nalik what, what were you you i think you were unmuting too that you were going to say something yeah we started at the same time i just put it in the text uh, in the chat box you know like the second column seems more respectful and it's more about that person still you know taking responsibility for actions the other one is i tell you so and you know it doesn't sound respectful and and it certainly doesn't give responsibility to the other person you're talking to and, and you know and a lot of people like to take responsibility for their actions and even if sometimes it's by falling and, and learning and, and taking bad decisions. So that was my thought. Great. Yeah, I think, I don't know, Desiree, were you going to say something? Me? No. Oh, okay, sorry. sorry. You took off your I, mask. Just I could not wear a mask, so <laughs> it worked out. Um, th this is, these statements are kind of all over on the spectrum of motivational interviewing though, too, on the right. This is assuming that the kid actually wants to talk about texting and driving. Um, it may also be assumptive, depending on when it's placed, that they actually are texting and driving. Um, so we could actually make it even more open. Um, what would be something that you could say to just open up the door to have that conversation as opposed to assuming that they're texting and driving? Yeah, thanks, Jordan. How do you feel about texting and driving? Ask their opinion on the subject. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. And it's like, hey, you know, you see someone texting and driving, like that person had their head in their phone and they just blew through that stoplight. What do you think about that? Yeah, so that you're basically starting an open ended um, conversation and, uh, and starting with an open ended question and just getting their perspective as opposed to assumptions. We don't have a ton of time left together, but I would like to. Um, I'd really like to talk about sex because that's super awesome and super scary for a lot of people. So um, what if I said don't have sex? What would be one that we could say that might be on the right there?
And if you strongly feel that this is something that you wouldn't say at all because of your role, what would you say? Maybe something like um, if, if you saw the couple together in the corridor on the hallway that you say, you know, I saw you yesterday together and then start the conversation from, from there. Yeah. What does it look like to, to have a healthy relationship with someone? What's important to you in a relationship they come, that becomes physical? Anyone else? I, I do like to have the discussion where, you know, it is a big decision, even though a lot of teens don't think so, ah, man, it's no big deal. But to actually just say that out loud and that whether you want it or not, that we don't know how, but it will change you and your relationship. Um, and you might want to think about that you know before you make the decision a little bit and so yeah something like that which again leaves it up to them but to really think about things ahead of time and uh, i think that is an important skill not just with sex but with all kinds of decisions that would be good for them to make a habit <laughs> Yeah, and Jordan said in here too, coming from the mouth of a sexual health educator, have you had discussions with your partner about sex? What kind of things would you like? Would you talk right. about? Yeah. yeah. Then it's not it's not judgment forward. It's you know just still trying to elicit um, what it is that they think and feel and potentially do. Um, and Lindsay said, I think it's important not to assume someone in their life has had a conversation with them about sex and opening that door to have the conversation. Absolutely. And that that whole idea of making the relationship physical or using other words, because sometimes people get scared by the, the SEX word. Um, it's a little bit of maybe judgment or concern or social faux pas around it. Um, but People are still sexual beings, um, and that's probably why people continue to have sex is because it probably feels good. Um, so being able to talk about those things openly um, is, is challenging and uncomfortable, um, but part of being human. So um, I'm going to pop forward here to my next couple slides um, just so you can, uh, and you're welcome to um, review those um, other components as we go forward. Um, I just like to, I always go back to this quote um, just because it reminds me of, of the importance of, of being human and that's what connects us all other than, you know, our breath. Um, so being able to like remember how, how we make other people feel and that's what they'll remember. Um, Jordan also says, a teen may not even know what questions to ask. So throwing out topics like consent, body confidence, knowing where to get condoms and birth control and so on, um, dropping, uh, topic dropping gives them some ideas. Absolutely, without judgment, perfect. Awesome. Um, so this is, that was the taster and then this is your next steps if you're interested. Um, what I like to do is encourage people to, and of course I can't share it right now. I'm gonna stop sharing because I can't share my, here we go. Yes, okay, I clicked it. Here we go. So this is our landing page um, for the state teen speak. Um, the password there is Alaska 2020 exclamation point. You're welcome to register for classes, um, contact, uh, me through the survey monkey to ask for books and workbooks. Um, listen to the audiobook for free. Just remember that it doesn't go back to the same place when you listen to it and walk away from it. You'll have to find your own chapter navigation. Um, it also gives you links to the online training 
um, for parents and supportive adults. And there is also CEU available training um, and CMEs um, for medical providers on motivational interviewing if you haven't done those before. Um, and it's a really great front loading experience for actually doing a full motivational interviewing training. Um, and then attend a skills workshop with us. Yes, lowercase Alaska 2020 exclamation point. Thank you. Um, Suzanne said, if, and if you ask permission before dropping topics, the student will keep their autonomy and choose to engage in the talk with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's the, that is the main you know, open door. Like, hey, I noticed something. Do you have time to talk with me about it? Is When is a good time? Um, so that who, what, when, where, how, and lastly, why um, are good ways to start those, those conversations. Okay, so um, speaking of who, what, when, where, how, and why, does anybody have any questions? I'm curious about the skills workshops. Are those on that page or um, is that just something we go and find on our own with motivational interviewing? Those, those are with me um, and I, I am a, I'm trained to offer them in the state of Alaska and eventually I will be trained to offer them offer training of trainers to be um, to do that work in the state as well. Oh, that's so wonderful. Go onto the survey monkey and click the, the button that says I, I don't know which date I, I want yet because I haven't had any I don't have any set up for the next month or two. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to see you all. Um, participate in those. It's really, um, it's a joy to see see people, um, not just, because this isn't just for adolescents, this is a change in how you talk with everyone. Um, it's changed my relationship with my husband, with my best friend, how I, and what I expect out of conversations has changed as well. So it gives us all a broader sense of mutual respect. It gives us that framework. Any other questions? I just want to say thank you um, and um, that I've dabbled in this a little bit. And I just want to say it just quickly gives meaning to conversations with teens that sometimes I only have one interaction with. And to use these methods have um, gotten us to a deeper level. And I really appreciate the training. Thank you. Yeah, so welcome. So hard to cram motivational interviewing into one hour. Impossible. Yes. But um, I figure this gives you a sense of like why it's important for you um, without going through the meaning behind open-ended questions and affirmations, and which are really hard, <laughs> and are also reflections and all those summary pieces. Just take pr practice which is why I teach it so I can keep practicing. Yeah. Great. Well, if does anyone have any other questions? Because if not, I will um, close us out with some awesome music. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks. And for you, for you, for you, for you, for you, not a better damn, for you, damn, for you, damn, for you, here, for you, down, for you, for you, down, for you, down, for you, make it that free. It's doing an ad first, sorry. Free, free. That's right. TurboTax Free Edition is free. Free, 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 free. And if you want a dance party, I encourage you to do so. If you are going to be sitting all day long, you better get up. <laughs> If you can. Fun, Kai. I know you like to dance. 